Hey guys, it's Buildzoid here, and uh, today we're going to be doing a bit of a follow-up video to the PCB breakdown of the X670E Creator, the Asus ProArt X670E Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. Because, um, uh, yeah, a few people pointed out that I might have the wrong power stage, um, which might be true, uh, but I don't have any way of verifying that, because uh, the 86992 and the 86992C787 have the exact same markings, right? So if we'll open up both of these. Also, what I find funny is the 86992C787 uh, uh, like uh, is apparently 80 amps, which is still not, you know, the 70 amps that Asus has on their website. Um, but, like, we have this comment over here saying that there was, like, a change to the, to the nominal current rating at some point. Uh, and if I go to Bing, um, like search, right? Uh, yeah, that actually seems to be the case. Unfortunately, I can't find any like, I mean, I haven't just searched super hard, but yeah, I haven't managed to like stumble across an older version of the data sheet. Um, like, so, so while like the Bing indexing has like 70 amps in it, any link that I've clicked on is 80 amps. Um, so that's quite annoying. Um, so that, that, yeah, so that is possible that Asus is using nominally 70 amp parts um, that are now nominally 80 amp parts. Um, but I also wanted to bring up something that I find really uh, sort of funny about this situation, which is like, so if we look at these 50 amp, like 86992s, Right, and you look at this efficient, like this performance graph. So for 500 kilohertz, 150 nano henrys, uh, outputting 1.2 volts uh, at 50 amps output, we're looking at a little over seven watts of heat. Right, a little over seven watts. Um, now we can't look at these uh, supposedly 80 amp parts because the data sheet just kind of ends uh, at page two. Um, so yeah, um, at least like the public documentation is like not complete uh i would not necessarily like i the thing is when you're the when you're as big as asus or msi or gigabyte you can actually get parts made to your you know like special requirements so i would not be too surprised if this was actually like a special order part for asus and that's why the rest of the data sheet is missing because that is a thing for uh, like i've seen that for certain voltage controllers in the past um, also, I think, like, Asus also has the, like, 110 amp power stages that they have on their crosshair boards, which, you know what, I'm actually, I'm, you know what, since, since we're on this topic, because I almost made a video about this, because, like, I was super frustrated about this when, when I was testing the gene, um, with the VRM thermals, because, yeah, I ran the, so I'll actually read out what I wrote down in my notes, um, for the gene. Um, so when I ran the gene with no VRM heatsink, right, and that is on supposedly 110 amp smart power stages, uh, actually, yeah, 110 amp smart power stages, it maxed out at 93 degrees Celsius on the VRM. Um, and this was with a roughly 200 amp load. Uh, for comparison, an X670 Aorus Elite, which uses 70 amp parts, uh, wait, did I not write down the results for the Elite? I swear I had this VRM. Oh, yeah, no, I've clicked on the wrong document. I do have the notes. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just actually, you know what, screw it, because now it sounds like I'm making things up on the fly, doesn't it? <laughs> so I'll just pull in the, the, the document that I uh, found. Um, there. Oh, oops. There. Yeah, so th those are my notes. So Crosshair X670E Gene doesn't have ten se temp sensor accessible in software. So I stuck a thermocouple to the hottest part of the VRM. VRM hit 93 degrees Celsius in a 22 degrees Celsius room after one hour of Prime 95, 128 KFFTs, completely maxed out LLC settings. Um, right, maxed out. So there's like zero V droop. This is at 1.1 volts. Now the X670 Elite uh, has VRM temperature readouts. The thermistor is in the hottest part of the VRM. So like I actually checked where that um, temperature sensor is because I've run into that as an issue with gigabyte boards in the past. There's like, uh, I think the B550 Vision does this where the temperature sensor for the VRM is like between the 
like the VRM, like you have the L shape V core, right? Standard V core VRM layout L shape. And then you have the two phases of SOC power at the far end um, towards the memory slots. Um, and basically they stuck the temperature sensor between the SOC phases and the, like between the one of the SOC phases and one of the V core phases. So the VRM temperature sensor reads really low. It's like 10 degrees, 15 degrees lower than the highest power stage temperature in that VRM. Um, with the Elite, that is not the case. The This temperature sensor is like midway through the actual uh, like V-Core VRM itself. Uh, it's not, you know, off to the edge of the power delivery, basically. This also means on that B550 vision board, the power readings are not super accurate because it doesn't use smart power stages. It just uses regular DR MOS and I think DC... Uh, inductor DC resistance for uh, power, like current monitoring, and the DC resistance of the inductors floats around with temperature quite significantly. So if you measure the temperature wrong, your power readings are wrong, and so that board underreports. Uh, yeah, it underreports VRM temperature, and I think it underreports power draw as a side effect of that. Um, but anyway, yeah. So uh, that's not a concern with the XX70 Elite. Um, and yeah, that board maxed out at 81 degrees Celsius in a 22 degrees Celsius room after a one hour of Prime 95 small FFT, like 128K FFT size at 4.8 gigahertz and a higher uh, voltage with extreme LLC. So there is a little bit of e droop on that. I don't, I think that board doesn't have an ultra extreme LLC setting because I don't know why else I wouldn't use ultra extreme. Yeah. So I'm going to assume that that board just didn't have Ultra Extreme LLC. And so the issue here is, right, like the Gene supposedly has like 110 amp smart power stages. And the Elite has supposedly 70 amp smart power stages. So you'd think if you take the VRM heatsink off both of them, because they're both uh, 16 power stage V-Core VRMs, you'd think the Gigabyte board would run hotter except it doesn't. It runs significantly cooler, even though it also has less PCB layers. Um, and now at the time, and I, I, yeah, like, and my suspicion as to why that is, is if you look out, look up the SIC 850, um, oh, that one doesn't even show up. Yeah, I don't think you can even, even, like, that one doesn't even have a public data sheet. But if you look at the 100 amp part, yeah, you can see it remembers where I scrolled down to. So this is the 100 amp pow uh, power stage. And for comparison, the the gigabo gigabyte board was on the 21472 um, from Infineon. Now, obviously, one of the issues is like, I don't, you know, like Vishe and Infineon may have very different methods of uh, measuring efficiency. Um, but, um, hey, for convenience, like, at least they're both at the same out, like, we have efficiency curves for similar output voltages, right? 1.8 volts, 600 kilohertz, uh, 1.8 volts, 600 kilohertz. Now, the scales are completely different, um, but you'll notice a few things. So, for one thing, this doesn't, this ends at 40 amps, which is, like, you want me to believe this is a 100 amp part, and you won't even tell me what it'll do at 60. Um, and two, uh, yeah, this Infineon part, suppose, like, this is almost doing 95% efficiency. Um, now, that's not including the po power draw of the VRM controller. It's not including the power losses in the inductor. Uh, it's not going to include the power losses in the power plane of the board, probably. So, like, you know... It's a lot of things, like, this is just power stage. But, um... Well, we don't, we don't have any details on this. Um, but this is at, like, 93%. Which is, um, a lot less efficient. Right? And then if you look at my actual, like, real-world test results, which the... Because I can't even find, like, a SIC850... Oh, wait, we can. I wonder why that didn't... Oh. Oh, yeah, no, we don't We don't get a data sheet for it. This is another... Yeah, this is, like, special order part for Asus, so it's, like, they're not even going to acknowledge that it exists. Um, 
What's the difference between... Isn't that literally the same part number? Anyway. So yeah, Asus has these like SIC 850s that you can't get any information on. But you can get information on the SIC 840s. These don't really look very good. Right? Like the 1.8 volt efficiency is honestly kind of awful, in my opinion. <laughs> um... But that could just be down, like, admit, it, like it could be because Vichet is including, like, board power losses, inductor power losses. But I don't know, because it doesn't say. Um, and in real-world testing, the Gigabyte board with the supposedly weaker power stages was running significantly cooler. Now, potentially, there was some variable in the, like test setup that I didn't account for, so maybe the Gigabyte board was getting, like, very slightly more airflow over the VRM or something. Um, I wonder, actually, I guess it would be optimal if you had, like, a water... Wait, no, airflow would still be a problem. Yeah, that, that's the thing, is... Like, for this testing, like, obviously I had the radiator not blowing air at the board, right? Because obviously if there was, like, direct airflow towards the motherboard, then, like, depending on where the airflow is going, it would drastically throw off the VRM temperatures. Because when, when you're, like, like, convection is so weak at uh, carrying heat away from things that, like, the gentlest breeze is going to ruin your measurements, <laughs> in terms of, uh, like, what kind of temperatures you're going to get. So you really do, like, yeah, like, I have the, like, radiator pointed away from the motherboard, right? It, like, the, the fans are in push configuration away from the motherboard so that there's, like, minimal chance of them affecting airflow around the board itself. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so this is, like, one issue with these nominal current ratings is just, like, they don't really, like... Like, you know, you would think that at the at the very least, a 110 amp part um, would, like, run, sig like, at least the same temperature as a, as a 70 amp part nominally. Um, so, yeah, that's fun. But, you know, um, and... Wait, is, does it say 70 amp nominal? Because here you have, like, 80 amp over current, but that's not, like, intended continuous. And on that note, what's really fun is, like, the data sheet also doesn't, like, if we scroll back down to that efficiency graph, right, like, it it's ends at 60 amps. Because realistically, you shouldn't be putting more than 60 amps through one of these. Like, it it's not going to be, like, if you look at the, the power losses, right, at 60 amps, this thing is going to be spitting out 10 watts of heat. It's a 5 by 6 millimeter chip. Um, it's it's not practical to, to run it with that kind of, uh, high, kind of heat output. Uh, also, you'd need one hell of an inductor for, for 60 amps. Um, that's not really the kind of thing you'd see on a motherboard. Um, but anyway, so that's like one one thing that I find really frustrating with the nominal current rating is just like I have very direct uh, experience of like trying to me like trying to actually measure you know the thermal performance of some supposedly extremely high current smart power stages against some pretty like these days, normal smart power stages and the supposedly extremely high current parts got absolutely wrecked. Now, it could also be that they were just way outside their efficiency curve because like, well, like uh, 16 of them, we pull up the calculator. That's not the calculator. Damn it, whatever. But anyway, we'll just carry on. Um, so. That's why I get for reusing my inputs in uh, OBS. But so roughly 200 amps, right, divided by 16, 12.5 uh, amps. So on the efficiency graph, we'd be somewhere around here. So that's not that far off the peak. And actually, even on the TDA21, yeah, we're like way below the efficiency peak for the TDA21472s as well. Um, all right, at 12.5 12 amps, like we're, we're down here. <laughs> Okay, we're not way below the efficiency peak, but we're before we're before the efficiency peak, um, and so that's true for both of these. Like we're not at the efficiency peak of either of these power stages, and the 70 amp parts are running cooler than the 110 amp parts. Uh, and I can't get documentation for the 110 amp parts, but something tells me if the 100 amp parts aren't looking so hot, the 110 amp parts probably don't look that hot either. Um, 
But anyway, the other funny thing about this uh, like whole nominal current rating stuff is that if you go through Monolithic Power Systems product catalog, uh, you will find an awful lot of parts rated way above 50 amps with performance curves that look identical to this. Um, so yeah, here we have like other parts from Monolithic Power Systems. Um, and the thing is, like, this is normal across, like, most power stage manufacturers. I think the only manufacturer where I've actually seen, like, big differences in the efficiency curves between their various smart power stages is Infineon, where, like, their 90 amp TDA2149, like, actually, let's just pull them up. Like, th those things are insane, um, if you look at the data sheet. And also, you never see them on motherboards. <laughs> They've been used on, like, the ASRock used them on the 6900 XT OC formula. Um, but, yeah, like, these are nuts. Again, like, some of this might just be down to, like, test methodology. But these things are hitting 97% efficiency. Like, that's insane. Um, these can do 60 amps output at, like, a little over 6 watts of heat output. So according to, again, Infineon's, you know, test methodology. Um, in the real world, you could get end up ve with very different results depending on implementation. But, um, yeah. Um, but anyway, so if we look through some monolithic uh, power systems data sheets, right? So we'll just go to their, like, full product catalog. And, I don't know, let's click on, say, uh, I, w I want something that actually has, like, a complete data sheet. That's, like, the main issue is some of these don't have full data sheets. So, we have the 86998. Uh, um, this looks pretty normal. And we have 15 pages. So, this should be the full data sheet. It's also 5 by 6 millimeters. Um, right, like, if we look up here at the footprint, yeah, it's also a 5 by 6 millimeter part. Because that can affect, like, how well the part dissipates heat, and that can affect the max current rating as well. Uh, and, yeah, if we zoom in at the efficiency versus output current, um, for 1.2 volts, now, admittedly, this is 100 nano Henry, 800 uh, kilohertz switching frequency, so I would expect the efficiency to be a tad lower uh, than, than this configuration over here. Um, but, uh, yeah, at, like, 50 amps, this is producing a little bit under 8 watts of heat. which is, like, basically the same. Actually, this is, like, this is closer to 7, which might just be down to that, like, lower switching frequency, higher inductance configuration. The funny thing is, actually, if they're including the inductor losses, then the higher inductance inductor could potentially be less efficient, especially at high currents. Um, but that also depends on the size of the inductor. Like, basically, with the inductors, if you have the same physical footprint inductor, like, occupies the same volume of space, and it has less inductance, it can do more current without with lower heat output. Um, but if the higher inductance inductor is also proportionally bigger, uh, it'll potentially have the same, like, current handling cap capability and same DC resistance. It just takes up more board space. Um... So, yeah, so this little efficiency difference could be, or, like, th this heat output difference could just be down to, like, the, you know, like, this is higher switching frequency, lower inductance. This should, this will have slightly lower efficiency because of that. Um, if we look at the uh, efficiency in the lower current ranges where the inductor would be less of a concern, um, well, like, let's say 2 watts, we're hitting that, like, we're going, like, a little bit over 2 watts at, like, 25 amps output, right? So if we look at this, uh, yeah, we're going a little bit over 2 watts at 25 amps output. And uh, this is a uh, nominally 80 amp part. 50 amp part. And this is a real problem with the really high current power stages at least from, like, what I've noticed with looking at the data sheets, is that, like, and I'm, and again, I'm not saying, like, the 86992 is bad. Like, any power stage that is hitting 94% efficiency is a good power stage, okay? That is, that is a l very, very efficient. If you want to see something uh, that is, like, not great, uh, you have, like, the 3553. 
Um, these are really old. So like for today, like for today's stuff, they're not great. Oh wait, did these get updated? No, this is preliminary. Okay, that's that's too old. Um, that's too old. Um, go away. I just need the data sheet. Hey, okay, yeah. So these are like ninety three point two percent peak. Um, should have more detailed graphs sort of lower down. Um, yeah, I love this data sheet because it's so detailed, but like this is also running at higher, uh, like most boards that actually implement these parts IRL will not run them at uh, seven volts. They'll run them at five volts, which lowers the efficiency a bit. Um, oh yeah, but here you can see like, oh, typical 3553 efficiency. And it's like, it's not doing that 93 percent efficiency it's doing like a little over 92 if we look at the heat output at 25 watt 25 amps current um these will produce like over three watts of heat right um and this is a 40 amp part so this is like a huge difference compared to a you know like so at the time this was like international rectifier considered this like a 40 amp power stage if you compare it to a modern 50 amp it looks like a joke even though, like, from the nominal current rating, they don't really sound that different, right? Like, 50 amps, 40 amps, that sounds like it might perform kind of similarly. And, uh, yeah, in practice, it, it won't. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't try to run a 16... Yeah, I wouldn't try to run 16 of these without a VRM heatsink when powering a 7950X. I, I don't think that would go very well. Um, so, yeah. Um... So, so that's just, like, you know, annoying um, with the nominal current ratings. It's just, like, they're kind of um, they're kind of all over the place from manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, oh, here we have the uh, 869956. I think these are used on a lot of NVIDIA cards. 70 amp output. Um, yeah, and you scroll down to those efficiency graphs, and this is, I think, literally the same graph that we have on the uh, 86998. Oh, wait, no, the 86998 was, like, blue and orange, not black and red. Anyway, but there are other parts that are black and red. Um, so let's try to find... So that's uh, 86956. Um, so we have 86965. That, that might be similar, right? Uh, okay, nope. It's not that many 60s. Oh, there we go, a full data sheet. Oh, but this is a three by six millimeter. Okay, well, that that's not, <laughs> we're not looking at that then. That's, that's like, it's too different in terms of shape. Um, is this also, no, this is another three by six millimeter. This is all but so three by six millimeter. That's wild, though, that you can get such small parts with such high current <laughs> ratings. Um, four by five, six by six, six by six. No, we want five by six. Okay, well, that's our 992 there. It's 650. I think this chart is broken. Yeah, I think something went wrong with the the. Why is it, why is it going to minus ten? Yeah, that that looks like. Uh, I think the efficiency curves are. Yeah, the efficiency curves look reasonable, but the rest of that, not so much. Um, wait, is this another 3 by No, this is a... No, this is a 4 by 5 Okay. Okay, that's also a really small one. Um, well, this is annoying. I was kind of hoping to get more examples for the, like, same size packages.
Wait, did we look at one? Oh, no, that is a different part. So, yeah, 57, but 56. Yeah, but I th I think that might actually just be the same the same chip with, like, some minor differences. It might be exactly the same. It might just be, like, for ordering reasons or something. Um... Wait, is why is the scaling not the same between the two? Well, I'm not seeing any immediate differences, so I'm going to go with these are actually just the same thing, which would make sense if since the part number is so... Well, you, you'd you say that, the whole, like, oh, the part number is basically the same, so it's not surprising that the parts are the same, but then you have something like, like International Rectifier with the uh, 3553, 3550... 3555, 3556, 3551, those are all actually pretty significantly different. Like, they share the foot... Actually, they don't even... They So some of those look like they share a footprint. Some of them do share a footprint. And they all have different current ratings and different efficiency curves, and it's very noticeable. Because, um, yeah, so the 3553 is 40 amps, the 3556 is 50, the 3551 is 50, the 3555 is 60, the 3550 is 60, and if I remember correctly, the 3553, 3550, and the 3551 share a... No, that's wrong. The 3553 is pin compatible with... No, it is pin compatible with the 3550. So, yeah, it should be 3550, 3551, and 3553 are all, like, pin compatible, and then you have the 3555, 3556, 3575. Actually, I think the 75 is compatible with the 3550s. Um, anyway, so, yeah, like, the, the, the part numbers being close together sometimes means they're similar parts, and sometimes it's like, nope. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so this is just, like, a frustration I have with the nominal current ratings is just, like, they are... I think, like, especially, like, I'm not sure if in the past they were more accurate, because there wasn't that many... Like, chances are, if your board had power stages, uh, it was using... Either it was using international rectifier parts, like the 3553, 3550, 3555, 3556, 3551, or... It was running discrete MOSFETs, or it was running, uh, like, DR MOS components from... Actually, yeah, who was it that they used a lot? Oh, uh, on semi... No, Fairchild Semiconductor. Yeah. So you'd get a lot of FDMF parts. Um... But even then, like, it wasn't, like... Actually, I can't think of a board that had FDMF anything. That's more like 980 TIs. 980 TIs are, like, reference 980 TIs are FDMF. And uh, you can get 7970s with a bunch of FDMF power stages. Um, that's, like, a, the FDMF is... I'm not sure... That's not... I don't think that's a product line. That's just, like, the first letters of the marking would be, like, FDMF 6820 or 6828, I think, was a thing. Um... Anyway, um, yeah, but the thing is with those, it was like, well, you wouldn't really, like, yeah, the, the, there weren't really direct comparisons that you could make, because if you were buying, like, a 980 Ti with actual, like, international rectifier parts, it would have more phases than the reference 980 Ti. <laughs> it would actually just generally be better better than a reference 980 Ti, so you couldn't do a direct comparison of just, like, the power stages against the, the ones NVIDIA like to use. Um... Because you'd have like two more, you'd have two more phases or more potentially, right? Like the Strix was a 12 phase V core VRM. Um, or you'd get like a 980 Ti with 16 phases. And then it's like, yeah, so that, that made direct like comparisons like that really difficult. But these days, there are so many different smart power stage manufacturers out there, right? Like you have monolithic power systems. Uh, Alpha and Omega Semiconductor makes a bunch of power stages that you'll regularly see on, like, budget motherboards and 4090s, um, which I just find hilarious that, like, yeah, the, the, like, Alpha and Omega Semiconductor 
And these they seem to be perfectly good power stages, but I just kind of find it funny that if you're going to see Alpha Omega, like Alpha and Omega, uh, AOS uh, semi. Yeah. So if you see power stages from Alpha and Omega on a motherboard, it's probably a low-end motherboard. But if you see them on a GPU, it's probably a 4090. Um, which I just find hilarious that, like, yeah, the the power stages for low-end motherboards get used on the really high-end GPUs. Um, not that, like, I think there's anything particularly wrong with these parts. Um, yeah, like, the boards that use them work just fine. Um, but yeah, so yeah, monolithic power systems, AOS, uh, Infineon. Infineon now owns International Rectifier, so International Rectifier is gone. Uh, on semi owns Fairchild, so you have like all of the on semi. So you have on semi, and on semi didn't used to make power stages back in the day. At least I don't remember seeing any on semi branded uh, power stages. I did see some Infineons on like a GTX 590. Renaissance has made power stages for ages and ages and ages. Actually, yeah, that that would be the that was like the other like yeah like DDR3 days. You'd see. Renaissance motherboard, like Renaissance DR Moss, and International Rectifier DR Moss, and Fairchild, and that was it. I don't remember seeing any other DR Moss components on a motherboard or a GPU uh, in the like consumer space. Maybe in servers, there was other manufacturers, but yeah, not in consumer. Um, anyway, so yeah, but now you have like everybody makes power stages. And uh, everybody seems to have sort of their own idea of what the nominal current rating is. Um, where like, yeah, like, and, and that leads to also like funny things like what, you know, uh, a, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but like what this person over here pointed out where it's like the data sheet is a newer version which changed 70 amps into 80 amps. Like, that sounds ridiculous. Right, like it that like it, like you'd think that would be a new part, <laughs> but it honestly wouldn't surprise me, because like yeah, looking at um, admittedly I didn't manage to get as many examples as I wanted, but like the 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 eighty six nine nine two, right, and some of the other actually, so this went to like so we have this eighty six nine nine eight. Um, and then we have like this. This had the full data sheet as well, right? Yeah, and at 50 amps, this is yeah, this is approaching eight watts of heat output at 50 amps, right? Same as our uh, 86992. At 25 amps, it's a little over two watts. Um, did I close the 86992 data sheet? This is a yeah, that's not it. Um, that's the one that doesn't have all the information in it. Um, so I did close it. Yeah, and so we have 25 amps, a little bit over 2 watts. 25 amps, a little bit over 2 watts. <laughs> um, and of course, 25 amps, a little over 2 watts. And yet these, this is like a 50 amp part, a 70 amp part, an 80 amp part. And then obviously once you get to like 50 amps, right, it's like, okay, so we have a little bit, like this is approaching 8 watts, uh, 50 amps approaching 8 watts, right, like it's over 7, like the issue, the scaling is different, right, so this is like, like 7 is probably right, right around here, so this is going to be like 7.5 or something, and then we have, uh, yeah, approaching like 7.5, I'd say, right. So basically, we have three different nominal current ratings and what seem to be exactly the same performance curves. Um, and in the real world, on like a real motherboard, you're never going to be loading these parts past 30 amps because you're not going to be able to cool them past that point. Not practically. Now, in server applications, that's not necessarily the case because on a lot of server boards, you just, you know, like you have the rack fans. So... The board gets so much airflow that, yeah, it's not necessarily, like, it's not completely out of the, the realm of possibility to cool, say, um, actually, the 3553 is probably the best example for this, because I did load a uh, six-phase vCore VRM of 3553s to just, like, I think 200 amps or something. So really pushing these things to their limit, 
right? Because these are 40 amp parts. So with six of them on a board, 200 amps, you're looking at, I think, 35. Yeah, you're looking at almost 35, something like that. Where's my calculator? Um, oh, I opened another one that wasn't necessary. But yeah, so I had a board with six of them. And actually, I might have been pushing. No, I think I maxed out at like 200 amps. So that would have been like 33, 33 amps, right? So we're almost hitting the the absolute like like the 40 amp nominal current rating on these things. At 30 at 30 amps output, these things are spitting out like five watts of heat. Um, and I could just about keep that board from like VRM thermal throttling because I put a like 9,000, not 9,000. I think it was like a 7,000 RPM fan directly over the VRM. Um, so yeah, in like a server application, you might be able to do this <laughs> or even this or even that. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think you'd want to do that because you'll notice going from 60 amps to 70 amps, the, the like efficiency is really like scraping the like you know like the, the jump in heat output going from 60 amps to, to 70 uh is massive right um but um yeah and so i just find this so yeah i just find this incredibly annoying about the nominal current ratings because then you also get parts like these 100 amp parts um actually gigabyte Gigabyte also used some of these silly uh, parts from, uh, what was it? I think it was the 820A, 80 amps. Oh, yeah, they put them on the Z590 Tachyon, didn't they? I didn't try to test them. Um, oh, I do I do remember complaining about this exact... Pro Wait, that looks like the same performance curve. <laughs> Oh no, it is slightly different. It's shifted over to lower currents. Yeah, like the peak of this is like above 20 amps, whereas the peak of this is like closer to 20 amps. Um, but yeah, I remember being really annoyed about this with, yeah, I think it was the Z590 Tachyon because all the other gigabyte boards were using like 60, 70 amp parts from I think Infineon, right? And again, Infineon, like 70 amp parts, like look at that peak efficiency. It's like way over 94%, right? Like it's almost 95. And then it's like, oh yeah, but this other high-end, like this supposedly like best overclocking board they made for that platform uh, uses parts that at least from, you know, the documentation that's available look uh, kind of terrible by comparison. Um, and in practice, I mean, I didn't try to do a, you know, test of like, Actually, I couldn't because the board was like 11 phases and all the other gigabyte boards were like um, completely different phase counts. Um, yeah, I think like the best would have been like a 12 phase with 70 amp parts for comparison. Um, I don't think there was a 10 phase board. So, yeah, so I didn't try to do like an eight, like a, a direct comparison like I did with the Gene and the X670 Elite um, because I couldn't get two VRMs that were similar enough to each other to do that kind of comparison. Um, but I do remember already getting annoyed by this where it's like, wait, this, like, this is probably just a test methodology thing, but man, um, it does make these comparisons really difficult. And also, the marketing around the power stage nominal current ratings is, in my opinion, just extremely uh, silly. Because it's so inconsistent across manufacturers that it's just, like, meaningless. Especially when, you know, on real, like, on consumer motherboards, like, you're going to have 16 of these damn things. You're never going to be loading them past, like, 30 amps. Right? Um, that, that's the other part of it, is just, like... Honestly, even 30 amps is going to be insane, right? Because 30 amps on a 16-phase VRM, that's 300... It's like four. It's like 480 amps of output current, right? Like, even... Like, that's a 14900K on liquid nitrogen territory. So... Yeah, so I find this, like... 
So I might be wrong about what power stages are on here. I don't think it actually affects the efficiency curves. Like, again, we can't actually get the documentation for the 86992, or at least I can't for the C787 version. But based on the fact that, you know, the 86998 and the 86956 and the 869950 amp variant all seem to have basically the same performance curve, I'm going to go with the 86992C787 probably has the same performance curve. Um, so it doesn't really matter that much that the data sheet isn't complete. Um, and yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. And actually, I, the F... Oh, actually... Oh, Texas Instruments also make smart power stages. You'll see... You sometimes see those on, like, Asus uh, GPUs. Um, I have a 2080 Ti with a bunch of Texas Instruments power stages. Um, Ti SPS 90A... Okay, that was a bad... They have like 85... Oh, and that's 5 amp part. Oh, this is not working. They had an 85 amp power stage. I remember buying them for a 2080 Ti that I was repairing. This is so annoying. <laughs> Oh, they might not be called smart power stages if they're uh, CSD. Well, that was closer, I guess. Wait, no, this is a dual NFAT, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's just a dual NFAT. Actually, it's not even a dual NFAT. It's a, just a regular NFAT. Yeah, that's not helpful. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, Texas Instruments also makes power stages now. Um, uh, actually, they might have made them before, but like you didn't see them on motherboards and GPUs in the past, or at least I, I don't remember seeing any. Um, and uh, yeah, so the that that's like like the nominal current ratings are just like they're not consistent across manufacturers, and so they're not helpful. <laughs> Um, and honestly, I've been kind of tempted to try, like, get my hands on, um, the, the thing is, like, the, the thing I'm concerned about, like, like, I wanted to try, like, swapping the different power stages on a VRM to see, like, hey, which of these actually runs coolest. But the problem with doing that is that they might not be configured correctly if you just keep using the same controller. Because, like, monolithic power systems makes monolithic power systems. Like, they make power stages and they make controllers. And um, there might be some proprietary functionality that you only get if you use a monolithic power systems controller with your monolithic power systems power stages. Um, same with, tech, uh, same with uh, International Rectifier. I think TI doesn't actually make controllers, or at least I've never seen a TI controller. Um, On Semiconductor makes controllers and power stages, so again, there might be some uh, things that, you know, you, you need an in, like On Semiconductor uh, controller for them to work. Uh, Vishay, I don't think... Uh, yeah, I think Vichet is usually used with intercell controllers, so that would be Renesas. Uh, Renesas, you want to probably use Renesas parts, right, with your Renesas controller. Um, and so, yeah, this, this is really, like, so I've had the idea of, like, oh, I could maybe just, like, swap the power stages around to actually, like, figure out, hey, which of these actually performs the best. Um, but the practicalities of that is, like, uh... I'm not sure that I'd be able to measure, like, do that, like, accurately enough. Also, what if the soldering quality for some of them is, like, like not ideal, right? Or I, like, overheat some of the power stages when soldering them and that kind of thing. So, yeah, uh, which could potentially, like, degrade them slightly, which could lead to, like, worse efficiency or something. I don't know. Um, but, uh yeah, so, like, the next best thing that I've been able to do is, like, take boards that have very similar VRM designs and then just run them without the heat sinks, um, right? That's, like, your your next best option to try 
gauge how good a specific power stage is compared to another power stage. But um, that's still not really ideal, right? And then also, again, like your motherboard has a VRM heatsink. So just because the power stages are somewhat less efficient doesn't mean the heatsink can't completely compensate for that. Or uh, there's this one Biostar board that I tested, which had 90 amps more power stages on it. The ISL 99390s ran stupid hot because it was a four layer PCB. That just like the PCB was making more heat than the entire everything, like the entire VRM. And actually Gigabyte pulled off basically the same thing with a Z590 board where the power plane was literally running hotter than the power stage is because the board was six layers and the 11900K is one very thirsty CPU. Um, so, yeah, you know. So, like, there'd be a hotspot, like, between the CPU socket and the VRM, and the VRM would actually be cooler than the, than the PCB, um, unless you pointed airflow directly at it. Um... Now, obviously, if you ran the VRM even cooler, so if you gave the VRM more cooling, that heat from the PCB would, like, sink into the VRM and then through the VRM into the heat sink. But, yeah, that, that was just, like, a, a funny sort of, like, we have all these great power stages, but the board can't take it uh, kind of situation. The Biostar was the same thing. The Biostar was way worse, though. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so basically... Um, like this is this is just an like it bugs me about doing with with doing PCB breakdowns is this sort of reality of like there's too many variables <laughs> that are out of my control where it's like the nominal current ratings from the different manufacturers are they're not consistent. Fifty amps to monolithic power systems uh, to means something different to you know what what. A 50 amp part to monolithic power systems is, or actually 70 amps is probably better because 50 amps these days is kind of a weird rating, uh, like not a very common power stage rating. Like there's a lot of 70 amp parts and then there's a lot of like lower current parts, but 50 is kind of like this weird middle ground, um, at least from what I've seen in on like actual boards. Um, also, I think there's like a push from the actual motherboard manufacturers for the power stage manufacturers to just pump up the nominal current ratings if like performance graphs be damned, right? Um, so, you know, which is which is kind of what I suspect might be going on with the like 86992C787 where it's like, oh yeah, this is, like, it was a 70 amp part maybe at some point, and now it's an 80 amp part. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, like, I would not be surprised if it turns out that, like, Asus wants to use uh, the, like, the 86, uh, like, this variant of the 86992 on, like, their upcoming wave of motherboards, and they want to market it as an 80 amp power stage instead of a 70, and so they just went to MPS and went, like, hey, could you raise the nominal current rating and it's like sure because th this number is basically meaningless it, it you know like and so yeah i am quite frustrated about this and this is also like the 105 amp like to be fair to renaissance the 105 amp uh renaissance power stages at least according to renaissance are better than the 90 amp intercell parts which are made by renaissance as well so hopefully they use the same test methodology and it wasn't like oh we just Provide give the one one o five amp parts better cooling. Actually, can we even pull up the Renaissance one o five amp parts? I don't think so. I don't think they're public. Um, yeah, there's a data short for these. Um, oh, I clicked on the wrong thing, didn't I? Yeah, product selector. Um, but yeah, so you have this really, like, dumb situation of, like, the nominal current rating from one manufacturer to another manufacturer is, like, it, it doesn't actually really mean anything. Um, it also really doesn't matter that much. Like, unless you're buying, like, really, like, unless the board is using, like, discrete MOSFETs, and the funny thing is with the discrete MOSFETs, like, you can get good discrete MOSFETs. 
But if a motherboard is using discrete MOSFETs, it's not because it's trying to be like unique and special, it's because they're trying to be cheap. So if they're using discrete MOSFETs, they're using the cheap discrete MOSFETs, and those are generally not good. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like, so like you can basically assume if the board has discrete MOSFETs, the VRM is probably not great. And then as soon as you get into the power stages, if it's nominally above 50 amps, it's probably pretty good. Um, the 40 amp parts usually were kind of like any, like 40 amps and down is like, okay, these not great. Though, funnily enough, you might actually be able to cool a 40 amp nominal current, like a 40 amp part at 40 amps output. Whereas when you get to something like a 90 amp part outputting 90 amps, it's not coolable. Like, it just isn't. <laughs> and this is especially true once you get to something ridiculous like, uh, you know, the SIC 840 over here with its 100 amp nominal current rating, where it's like, yeah, you're like even. Like, okay, let, let's just uh, assume, like, let, let, yeah, let's say we assume that the, uh, and we're going to go with 1.2 volts, right? Because 1.8 volts is for, like, server applications. So we'll just take the blue line here, and we're just going to assume that the efficiency somehow doesn't manage to drop below 90%, even though it almost certainly does, uh, by the time you get to 100 amps, right? Like, you can see that, like, going from, uh, like, 30 to 40 amps, we, we seem to have dropped, like, almost two percentage points, right? Because we're like almost halfway through here, like we're almost at like 91%. Um, and then down here, we're at like, actually, no, we're almost at, wait, what, 90? Oh, wait, we're so we're above 91%. Okay, so maybe that's like half a percentage point. Yeah, so like half a percentage point. So, you know, by 50 amps, we're going to be at probably 90 by, you know, if it kept falling linearly, which it won't, it'll keep, it'll get worse faster. Um, but at 50 amps, we'll be at like 90, probably 60. We're going to be at like 89.5. You get the idea. But let's say, let's say that didn't happen. Let's say the efficiency just never dropped below 90%, which is not possible, but let's pretend. And let's say we put 100 amps through our power stage at 1.2 volts. So we're outputting 120 watts of power, right? 120 watts are coming out of the voltage regulator. Which means that if we have 90% efficiency, there is 133 watts going in to the power stage. Uh, so if we subtract our 120 watts from that, this thing will be spitting, uh, spitting out 13 watts of heat. It will not be coolable unless you want to water cool your power stages, um, right? So that's that, that's the thing is like, so like what, like the nominal current ratings, once you get past a certain like max current, it's just like this actually just doesn't matter because you won't be able to cool this. Um, so yeah, and, and that's like, and I'm being optimistic here with the whole like efficiency won't drop below 90%. Um, Actually, I wonder what the TDA two one four nine, uh, the yeah, the twenty one, the two one four nine zero, would do. Cause that is like still yeah. That admittedly, this doesn't account for PCB losses, inductor losses, you know, everything else losses. Whereas this might, I don't know. Um, so at sixty amps, this is still doing over ninety four percent efficiency. Uh, that's also at 1.8 volts, and the thing is, you get better efficiency at higher output voltage. So, uh, yeah, that would have to get like derated, some like like downgraded somehow. The heat output would still be insane, though. I mean, even at 60 amps, right? Like 1.8 volts, um, you're going to be looking at like over six watts of heat. That's really not that much. Um, anyway, so this video is just incredibly rambly and kind of pointless, but. Or I, I guess it's not pointless, but yeah, like I would just not pay that much attention to the nominal current ratings. Like basically, you you can kind of assume that if you have like eight 50 amp power stages, like not if it's nominally 50 amps and there's eight of them, it can probably do 200 amps without issues. If it if there's like 16 of them, it can definitely do 200 amps without issues. It can probably do 400. Um, the funny thing is, again, you run into that whole issue of like, well like 200 amps at, on eight power stages is technically like proportionally the, the amount like, you know, when you go from 
uh, 200 amps through eight power stages. That's going to be, uh, I don't know, like some amount of heat per power stage, right? And that's not going to change if you have 400 amps going through 16 power stages, but the total heat of 400 amps going through 16 power stages is actually going to be a lot higher. So it would potentially need more heat sinking just because like the whole area of the board might be getting a lot hotter just because so much more heat is being outputted. Uh, also, the, the power plane of the board itself might start becoming a real problem at 400 amps, whereas at 200 amps, it probably won't be, um, unless it's like a four-layer PCB, in which case it will be a problem. So, yeah. Um, hooray nominal current ratings. But yeah, so basically, ju just don't, don't concern yourself with them that much. And yeah, I might have made a mistake. It might be using uh, eight, like these power stages. I have no way of telling. It 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 probably even is, but they're probably also the same performance as what the the fifty amp part. So it's like, does that even really matter? Um, and if we scroll through the documentation for these, we have like instantaneous current one hundred ten, um, and the overcurrent protection I think is actually seventy five. Amps here. Oh, yeah, so we have high side current limit, 75 amps. Um, if we look at these, then I'm guessing these have just, yeah, these just have a much higher current limit. This is at 110 for the 70 amp parts. And then for the uh, 80 amp, these are the 80 amp parts, right? Yeah, these are 80 amps. Um, and we have a current limit of also 110. Yeah, so nominal current ratings, but like they don't even tell you what overcurrent protection you're going to get. Um, actually, if we go through here, we have like the, oh yeah, this is the current limiting for each of these. This is probably a typo. Um, but yeah, so we have 120, 110, and this is like a 90 amp part apparently. So 110, 120, 110, 110. Uh, 95, 90. <laughs> um, that, that's like the overcurrent protection on these. Um, so I guess that's like the one thing that does change, but the actual like thermal performance doesn't seem to vary very, like, like, yeah, thermal performance doesn't seem to change very much. Um, and I'm not really sure. I guess the, the ability to handle really high peak currents might be good for like, I mean, I guess for, like, powering a 4090 or something, it would be important, right? Or, like, for GPU power delivery, where your average power draw might be pretty sensible, but for, like, very short periods of time, you need huge amounts of current. And it would be kind of awkward if your power stage just kind of turned off before it overheated. So you need a really high current limit for that uh, without necessarily the... Like, without necessarily the power stage actually being able to dissipate that heat in a in a practical sense right um so yeah but like still for like consumer motherboards I i'd say like for am5 it's like if you have 850 amp power stages you're good for lga 1700 you probably want 12 50 amp power stages um and some airflow in that case because like well, yeah, no, 12 actually seems like a sensible number. 12 should be fine. It, it depends also, like, some because the thing is, you can get sometimes, like, a six-layer board. Yeah, you could get, like, a Z790 motherboard that's, like, a six-layer PCB with 12 power stages and then, you know, anemic heat sinks, and then it's like, yeah, you're really going to need airflow in that scenario. Or you could get, like, 12 50-amp power stages on an eight-layer board with really big heat sinks, or even on a six-layer board with really big heat sinks, and then you don't need that much airflow, right? So, um... Yeah, the, 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 so, yeah, the, like, I, I don't, like, I don't, I don't really know where this video is going. The funny thing is, I've had an idea for, or like, I've kind of wanted to make a video, like, moaning about the fact that nominal current ratings are, like, basically useless these days. <laughs> uh, for a while now, like, I remember, I think when... Yeah, like, that was ages ago. Like, that was, like, last year 
or something when I was seeing like motherboards getting announced with just like insanity, you know, power stages. And it's just like, man, this is these like, first of all, you're never actually going to use those. Like you're never like, you're never going to use the, like you're never going to put a hundred amps through a hundred amp power stage Two, even if you did, you can't cool it. So you won't like it. It's still, it'll still overheat. Um, and three, your mother, the rest of the board isn't going to take it. Like the rest of the board isn't going to be able to handle that kind of current anyway. So, but let's say that if the board was able to handle that, you still wouldn't be able to cool the damn power stage. Like, like as far as I'm concerned, these like insane nominal current ratings that you see on mother, like on power stages these days are like, probably directly driven by demand from motherboard manufacturers um, to have, like, the biggest VRM. And it's just like... Why are we doing this again? Like, we all... Like, I like a... You know, I appreciate a good... Uh, a good VRM. Like, that's kind of all my freaking channel is about. Or, like, there's a lot of... Like, it's more my channel started with, right? But... Like we we already went through this. There was a there was Z790 and Z87 motherboards with 32 60 amp power stages on them. It was not good, or well, it wasn't practical because you had a quad core CPUs that would struggle to pull more than 200 watts. Um, and and we're doing the same thing except now it's like okay we haven't you know nobody's come up. Actually, is it, doesn't Azrock now have like a X870 board where they're like oh yeah we're gonna totally where it was like 30 something power stages twenty seven one hundred ten amps more power stages see my point why it's, it's like what <laughs> Like, on the Z790, it kind of makes sense, because, like, the 14900K is potentially really power-hungry. But Ryzen CPUs don't pull that much current. They, they just don't. Like, you'd probably get better VRM thermals by removing half of these power stages. <laughs> And just not running them. Actually, like, better efficiency, potentially, by just, like, not running half those power stages. Um, depending on how they're controlled, that wouldn't even be that difficult to do. What's actually kind of funny is, like, because modern motherboards have so many power stages on them, you could have a... Yeah, you could potentially implement some kind of, like... Uh, redundancy into the VRM where if like one power stage fails the rest of the VRM just can keep running because it just doesn't matter you'd need like you'd need some kind of extra circuitry to like isolate the dead power stage but once it's like you know like you could I guess you could have like a fuse in front of each power stage so if one of them dies it pops the fuse and the board is still good to go you know because yeah what's one one out of 27 power stages man like that that, that doesn't matter um so, yeah, and and of course we also have the 110 amp uh, nominal current rating. So I guess they got their hands on the same parts that Asus is using from Vichy, unless somebody else came out with just a stupid high nominal current rating part again. Um, what's actually really funny is like if you go through Vichy's uh, product lines, they have a bunch of like uh, other. Um, DR MOS components that are actually like at least from the like efficiency graphs look better than the 800 series like the 60 yeah like these yeah see like it's just like 60 amps and then, and then you scroll down to the actually do they even mention yeah 95% peak efficiency, 
And then you have this 80, 800, for, the 840, which is like a hundred amp monstrosity. And, and like, they don't like, th like they don't even mention the efficiency, which is like, wait, is it actually less efficient? Which I, I kind of doubt. I, I would hope that this is just like a measurement methodology difference and not literally like, oh yeah, this, this is actually just worse, but bigger number. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Cause like, obviously I've, you know, like also the SIC 620 is really old, um, compared to the 800 series parts. Um, yeah. So like nominal current ratings are just actually useless. Um, and it kind of frustrates me greatly. Um, and yeah, um, so I guess like, like maybe Asus was like maybe Asus is actually using seventy amp parts, like nominally seventy amp parts, um, that have now been relabeled as eighty amp parts, um, and performance wise, they're probably the same as the fifty amp parts. So like, yeah, well, this video has gotten completely out of control, um. But I don't, I don't know how else to address this, cause like, yeah, like th this is just um, a mess. We have like, and I really wouldn't be surprised if it was directly caused by motherboard manufacturers pushing for no higher and higher nominal current ratings, because like, like I, I don't, like I don't see Nvidia you know, going to, uh, like, a power stage manufacturer and going, like, oh, yeah, our next Founders Edition needs one, like, you know, some kind of insanity power stages. Um, or, like, our, like, they're not going to say our next Founders Edition needs, like, 90 amp parts or something. They're just going to go, like, we need a... Actually, NVIDIA is probably going to design the power delivery themselves, but they're going to be looking for, like, oh, we need to be able to handle X amount, like three, four hundred amps of output current. Um, we're going to choose parts in a quantity that can handle that. Right? Um, and then we just... And, and we're also going to choose them so that the overcurrent protection doesn't kick in when, when the card goes from, like, like hits peak dr power draw or something. Because, um, yeah, it's only, it's only motherboard manufacturers that, like, advertise the nominal current ratings. And it's just like... <laughs> And then, then when you look at the actual um, parts and the real world, and and I like I wish that, well I don't want to. This is the thing is like I don't really want to bother doing a bunch of like VRM testing where I like take the heat sinks off because it's like it's not real world at all, and it's and and even then it's like it's not close enough, right? Like because there's going to be differences in how the PCBs are designed. Um, you can control for the switching frequency somewhat, so that's not a big deal. But the inductors could play a big role, right? Like some, some like the there's going to be different inductances, different DC resistances. Um, so the different inductances are going to give you different like uh, like slightly like lower inductance inductors will generally give you higher RMS currents through the power stages because the current is going to ramp through them fa faster. But on the flip side, the DC resistance of the inductor is going to be lower. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, and so, yeah, this is all very silly, I think. Um, and, uh, and an unfortunate limitation of the PCB breakdowns, in my opinion, where it's like, yeah, like, What am I supposed to do about this? Because it's not... Yeah. And, and, like, the other thing is, it you really... And, again, it just also doesn't matter. Like, once you get to something like the 16 power stages of a, of a X670 Creator Wi-Fi, right, and you're powering a 7950X, like, these could be 50 amp parts, these could be 90 amp parts, it could these could be 110 amp parts. It just doesn't matter, because it's a 7950X, and it doesn't pull that much power. <laughs> So, um, 
Yeah, but I do wish, like, the one thing, I, like, I, I still kind of wish I could test the gene against the pro art with no VRM heatsink. Because I do wonder about that. And I still have the Elite board, so I could, like, retest all three of them to really, like, you know, 16 power stages, 70 amp Infineon, 50 or 70 amp monolithic power systems, 110 amp Vichy, which I really don't believe is actually 110 amps, but sure. <laughs> um... What else? I actually... Wait, MSI might... Actually, no, I don't think... ASRock... No, ASRock VRMs are basically the same as Gigabyte VRMs in terms of power stages, if I remember correctly. So that would be pointless, maybe? There might be a 16... Because I have 16 power stages Infineon. Like, I'm, I'm thinking, is there a board that's 16 power stages Renaissance? Um... Yeah, that's what I'm wondering about, is if there's a 16 power stage Renaissance board. Because Gigabyte, I think, has 18 power stage and 20 power stage Renaissance, um, which I don't think, like, that would not be very fair as a comparison. <laughs> um, but uh, also what's really funny about the gene is that the VRM ends up getting so hot, even though Asus is doing that thing where they put the SOC, VR, like, the SOC VRM in between the V-core phases to, like, reduce the thermal density. Um, but again, maybe, maybe it is helping the thermal density and those power stages are just really that inefficient, which really like begs the question, how are they 110 amps? Um, anyway, so hopefully I've wasted enough of your time at this point and I am, I'm very sorry about that, but yeah, this is just like a, a thing that like I've been sort of mentally struggling with when making PCB breakdowns... Yeah, actually, when making PCB breakdowns for a while now, where it's like, man, these these nominal current ratings, they don't... They don't seem to mean anything. Um, and it annoys me. And it also doesn't... Like, it also really doesn't matter that much. Like, yeah, like, it also... Again, it also doesn't matter that much. If you have, in, like, past a certain point, it's like, yeah, this is overkill, it's fine. Right? And more overkill is not going to make it, like, it's not going to cause problems. So, anyway, I'll just end the video at this point because I'm, like, evidently completely out of words. And this is just going in circles. It's probably been going in circles for a while. And I do apologize for that. Um, but, yeah, um, so I guess maybe you found this interesting. Maybe even useful by some miracle. Uh, in which case, uh, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store, uh, and I also have a band camp. So if you want to, like, torture your ears with some awful, awful music, uh, you could check that out. And then Teespring has, like, shirts and posters and other merch type items oh hoodies yeah stuff like that um so yeah and uh, that's it for the video so thanks for watching and goodbye